When I was six, my Uncle Rich bought my sister and I hamsters. In the spirit of the 1980s, those hamsters were named Eddie Van Hamster and Bruce Springster. They were cute. They ate their food and they ran on their wheel. I never thought much about why they needed the wheel, but they were content to run. Hamsters love to run. They're born to run. But when caged in a small space, they have nowhere to go. So we place the wheel in their cages and they run. Eddie Van Hamster and Bruce Springster were not bored by their wheel. They embraced the wheel, wheel because it's where they were able to release all of their energy and really live. But people are not hamsters, and it's not pleasant to feel like you're stuck running in a circle. Hamster wheels keep moving, but never actually go anywhere. After six years of teaching, I started to realize that teaching had become my hamster wheel. I did the same thing every day, but I never felt like I was getting anywhere. I woke up, I went to work, I came home, I watched TV, I went to bed. I woke up and the wheel kept turning. My classroom felt the same. I got to work, I changed the date on the board, I displayed the do now, and I taught history. Worse, my students were stuck with me. They came in, they sat down, they did their do now, they listened to history. I knew that something had to change, both personally and professionally. The change that enabled me to get off the hamster wheel professionally involved rethinking my classroom environment and the curriculum I taught my students. Rather than teaching history one unit at a time, jumping from ancient Greece to ancient Rome to ancient China, I incorporated the Big History Project curriculum. Instead of delivering the content to my students one lesson at a time, I became the lead learner in the classroom. I no longer told students what to learn, I modeled how to learn. Gone were the days of lectures and notes and multiple choice tests. I changed how I thought about education and what students needed to be able to do. And memorizing facts and dates was not one of them. Getting off the hamster wheel for me involved a few things, like setting goals, seeing growth, and seeking adventure. Personally, I found a new hobby in running, and I was soon setting goals to run races. First, a 5K, then a 10K, and finally my first half marathon. The confidence I gained by setting running goals allowed me to become a better teacher. In my classroom, my students needed some goals to crush as well. Writing is one of the critical skills emphasized throughout the Big History course, and writing is hard. My middle school students needed support when it came to improving writing. One of the formal writing activities is investigation writing. This is a DBQ style essay where students have to analyze documents to develop a claim. They use evidence from these documents to support the claim. There are built-in writing progression activities that support students in learning how to develop a claim, support their claim with evidence and analysis, and organize their essay, and use the proper language and style. Big History Project also has a feature called SCORE that uses computer-based essay grading. Students can submit their essay and receive nearly instantaneous, consistent feedback on their writing. Using SCORE has allowed my students to set writing goals. Before writing investigation essay for Unit 3, students scheduled five-minute conferences with me. In this meeting, we reviewed the scores and feedback for their previous essays. My students set a goal to improve their writing score for the next investigation, whether it was to write a clear claim or maybe to support their claim with appropriate evidence. After spending a few days analyzing the documents, writing their essay, and completing revision stations, students turned in Investigation 3 to score. The next day, I was ecstatic to share the news with my students. All of them had made progress, and 65% had reached the goal that they had set. With Big History Project, my students left the wheel behind. They didn't just write another essay. They focused on a specific skill, giving them an opportunity to challenge themselves and set goals and crush those goals. In order to stop the hamster wheel from constantly spinning, I need to grow personally and professionally. Personally, I had started with running and seeing growth in my performance encouraged me to continue to push further and further. 
If seeing growth in my personal life helped my hamster wheel to stop spinning, how can I help my students to experience growth and abandon the hamster wheel in the classroom? Aside from setting writing goals and working to improve them, the Big History Project introduces essential thinking skills that progress students through mastery of various skills and thinking practices. For example, the causation skill is introduced early in the year. When we get to causation, students have already spent the year learning about the history of our universe, from the Big Bang through the birth of new stars. I set the stage for causation by telling my students about an elaborate domino display that my friend has spent days putting together. I visit to see the display, and as I'm looking at the awe-inspiring, intricate design, my friend needs to leave the room, just for a minute. Alone in the room, I tip over one of the dominoes, setting off the entire display. My friend comes back to the room, sees what happened, and is obviously upset. What caused the dominoes to fall? My students usually say it's my fault. I'm a horrible friend, and I tipped over the domino but I have to push their thinking a bit. What if my friend didn't leave the room? Isn't his leaving the room the reason I did it? They tell me no. What about my years long desire to set off a domino chain? How about that butterfly in Africa? My students are still convinced that the cause of the display being knocked down is simply me tipping that precarious domino over. This short scenario begins my students thinking about events having multiple causes. They learned that in actuality, I was simply the triggering event and there were many causes that led to the dominoes being knocked over. Throughout the course, students are learning to understand that historical events rarely have a single proximate cause, a triggering event, but that there are many events, short term, intermediate term, and long term that lead to the event being studied. We revisit causation throughout the year and each time we do, students are able to see the growth of their understanding of this skill and how to identify how events are related over time. Setting goals and seeing growth over time allow for the hamster wheel to stop. Students aren't just doing the same thing over and over again. Instead, they're changing the way they think, the way they write, and the way they learn. Another way to make sure students are not stuck on the hamster wheel in class doing the same thing over and over again is by adding in some adventure. Adventure is defined as an unusual and exciting, sometimes risky, experience or activity. And seeking adventure is another way the hamster wheel can take a rest. I have never truly considered myself to be a risk taker, but I do like adventure. I seek adventure through travel and I'm happy whether I'm in the mountains or on an island somewhere. And I always make sure to incorporate running into whatever location I visit. You get a bit of a different view when you're moving around on foot in a new location. So how can I bring this sense of adventure to my middle school history students? The answer to that question is actually really easy. The Big History Project is the adventure my students needed to stop the spinning hamster wheel. That was my history class. History is a story of the past, and in my class, we begin with the Big Bang. You can't get much further back than that. After a few weeks of learning about the universe, I pack up my class and we head on over to the gym. At this point in the year, students have already learned about accretion, which is the process through which planets are formed. While in the gym, I challenge students to form a planet through accretion. We begin in a circle spread out around the room, alone, simulating a lonely dust particle. I play some music, and as they walk in a circle around me, the sun, they begin to cluster together. Bigger groups attract more particles. I stop the music. They tally up the number of people in their group and come switch out their labels. They become chondrules, or meteoroids, or asteroids, depending on their sex. I play the music again. The process continues. At the last go-round, they make a planet. We have accretion success. This activity is fun for the students. It reinforces the concept of accretion and gets them up and moving. Anytime students can have fun, engaging lesson, it helps them to stop the hamster wheel from spinning. And they get a different view of history by moving around. 
Now that they formed Earth, they continue on the historical adventure, learning about plate tectonics and the origin of life on Earth and what makes life so special. Early humans and what makes Homo sapiens different from other species. Students discover the importance of agriculture on the forming of early civilizations and how collective learning increased over time, leading to the expansion of our globe as the world zones became interconnected through exploration and trade. My classroom used to be a good classroom, but now that I have left the hamster wheel of unit after unit, assignment after assignment, and incorporated the big history project curriculum, my classroom is a great classroom. Eddie Van Hamster and Bruce Springster may have really enjoyed spinning on their wheel, but it is just not for me or my students. We are not hamsters. <laughs>